morning. Uh, my name is Mark Harville and uh, I encourage you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Mark Harville Art and I uh, have a lot of paintings, uh, tutorials on that site that I hope can be uh, of benefit to you. Um, we're going to start a new painting today, so let me tell you about what I've done. I've got a 18 by 24 canvas and I've put a ground color here, stained. Um, I just used real cheap paint. Um, I don't like to, to ground my canvases with, um, with good paint because paint's expensive. But uh, they do have these, these uh, basic uh, brand paints from Liquitex that are pretty cheap, um, pretty cheap acrylics. And so these are the types of things I like to use. Um, this particular one I used uh, burnt umber and a mixture of neutral gray with a little white. And that's uh, how I grounded the painting so that uh, we're ready to go here. What we're going to paint today is going to be uh, a fighter jet scene. I've wanted to do um, jets for a while now and just never really have, but uh, I think they're really neat and interesting. So we're going to do a, a landscape here where we're going to have uh, some mountains in the background. Um, they'll be snow covered. Uh, maybe a little valley, um, and then some fighter jets that are flying over that. So should be uh, should be interesting. Uh, so we'll get going on that. So in this section here, I've just started with the background, and I've started with uh, a little bit of um, light ultramarine blue, a little turquoise, and some white to opaque it, and just. Um, come through here and get it spread. I'm now adding a little bit of orange and white um, to kind of create some distant um, setting light there or, or a sunrise light and then just smoothing it out with my uh, fan brush. And then at this point here I'm just going right back over with the same colors um, just to make sure I'm getting a good covering. I don't want to have any brush strokes. I don't want to have any of the uh, ground color showing through. So just giving it another coat here. Um, on this right side of the canvas, I'm using ultramarine blue just to kind of darken it up. Uh, just adding straight ultramarine blue here. Now coming back with my filbert brush and adding uh, my cloud um, and just simply using some white with a little yellow and uh, bringing in some soft cloud formations here. This will be a, a cloud I'm adding here that will also kind of eventually go in front of the mountain after I've lain that in. And now using my angle brush, I'm using um, just a little bit of, of titanium white with some ultramarine blue and a little bit of um, some brown. Um, so trying to make a nice distant mountain. This will be the same colors. I just come in and add a little bit of purple um, so that'd be dioxazine purple added to that same mixture and, um, and added that in here. And then I'm kind of changing the coloration a little bit, adding a little more blue, a little more purple, um, a little bit more of, the, of our browns, and then just bringing in um, these mountains. I'm trying to get the shape, so I'm trying to be careful here and, and make sure I can get every angle. Um, of shape into these mountains. And I'm just drawing myself a little bit of a guide here. This is going to become the shadow uh, that's going to be into the snow. Um, so the the lights coming um, from the right of the canvas, that would be the sun, 
and so the mountain formation will be uh, causing a shadow into the snow here and that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out and now it's just a matter of going back into my big pile I'm adding um, some more browns and blues and purples um, and just getting a lot of different kind of coloration here I'm leaving brush strokes I just think it's going to add some interest to the painting and um, kind of kind of going into more of the purples and blues here this is going to again be a lot more of that shadow and I'm trying to blend it into the mountain on the right side I'm going a lot more into the darker colors uh, purples even adding a little bit of midnight black uh, to the mixture um, a little more ultramarine blue and that way uh, the right side of the canvas will be a, a lot darker. And that's where I'm adding more of the midnight black. I'm also adding some turquoise. I wanted to get some different colors in there. Um, this on the left side is another mountain formation here. That'll be kind of popping in front uh, of the valley that I'll be creating. And then this will be me laying in the foreground. This will just be um, where the, tr the standard trees will eventually be. So I wanted to uh, make sure to bring that in. That That's gonna be underpainting of the snow color there. Uh, again, turquoise, white, ultramarine blue, a little purple, and get the uh, foreground um, painted in. Now I'm just trying to get the right shape for my shadow. Still just trying to work out the angles here, making sure I'm getting all the brush strokes that I want to have. I'm starting to add the first layer of highlight into the rocks and into the snow at that point in time. And then coming back here to my most distant mountain and just using some um, titanium white with just a little bit of ultramarine blue and try to bring in my shapes for that mountain. just reforming my 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 mountain that uh, or the peaks that are right in front of, of the most distant mountain there making sure that I didn't lose anything on that and then just coming through with a little bit more pure titanium white just to help to really pop out some of the of the light that it's reflecting from the Sun into the mountain Now I'm going to start working on my next peaks uh, that are a little more, a little closer, uh, just trying to figure out where I want to have all the snow. So I'm making a lots of different snow formations that are forming on these, these distant peaks here. And I'm just using, uh, really it's more just a mixture of titanium white with some ultramarine blue, making sure that uh, it's a little bit of a lighter blue that we're bringing in. This is going to be in shadow. It's not going to have any highlight really. Um, it should be facing away from the sun. And uh, now I'm kind of working on the most distant part of the valley here, bringing in the snow, um, using the titanium white mixture with the ultramarine blue, and start kind of working that up the sides and edges of my mountain here that's uh, 
in the most close foreground. Adding different colors, adding some, some turquoise right there. Um, just trying to make sure I can have a lot of different colors to add interest. And now I'm bringing in my next layer of peaks that are a little closer. And I know that these are going to be covered a lot by some, um, a little, a little fog, maybe a little cloud formation that's real low, low hanging clouds. But uh, just wanted to get that laid in real quick. And now right here, I'm just using a pure titanium white, nothing else. It's got a little yellow uh, mixed with it, but mainly it's just the pure white. And this will be the part of the painting that's getting uh, an enormous amount of sun glow. Um, and I really wanted to make sure that I got the shapes right uh, between the shadows of the cliff and the mountain and... Uh, and then some of the highlight section running through the valley there. And now I'm kind of scumbling in a little bit of cloud formation that's hovering a little lower over the over the mountain, bringing another layer right here of of uh, a bit lighter blues and and purples and turquoises. Wanted to make sure that. Um, you know, we're just slowly working in a little bit more of the highlights as we go, just slowly building this in. This is going to be a section of the painting that I know is going to be drawing a lot of, of the eye into the center of the painting. So just trying to take some time and make sure that uh, the transition and contrast between shadow and light are kind of where I want them to be. Adding a little bit more tur uh, titanium white. I want to make sure that it's it doesn't have a lot of brush stroke and a lot of the ground color uh, shining through. And still just kind of building in those colors on the mountain there, building in. I'm starting to bring in a little bit more of my, my siennas and my umbers uh, to start forming the rocks. And now I'm kind of bringing the first layer of the highlight, which is just yellow and, and uh, titanium white with some sienna color um, to begin with. And on the shadow side, I'm using more of titanium white, purple, and burnt sienna. Um, just a little bit to make it a little bit darker and kind of scumble that along so that that it's kind of mixing well between my snow uh, color and my rock color. Now, as I go back into my highlights for on the right side, that's getting the most sun glow. Um, I'm using my yellow and my orange and my white as my highlight mixture. I'm going over it one more time with those colors over that sienna to really help it to pop. And I'll continue to do that a little bit along the way. I'll, I'll lighten that color, add a little bit more titanium white to it, to the yellow-orange mixture, and get those highlights really strong. And now I'm kind of feeding in some more of the snow that's kind of um, lying further up into the, the canyon there. Now I'm just grabbing, I want this to be my snow that's getting most sun glow. So that's just really a pure titanium white that I'm using. And using pure white uh, just all through this section here on the sun side, sunny side of the cliffs. And then I wanted to add some shadow color here. So this, this frontmost peak I knew is going to have uh, a little bit of, of the reflection of the shadow lying into the sun glow. Um, and that just makes a really interesting contrast for the painting. I 
want to get all this laid in before I start adding any more of the of the cloud formations that are low hanging um, around those peaks. Just adding in another layer of the titanium white just to make sure that it's uh, really thick there and and that nothing's showing underneath it. Now I'm just kind of forming my peak a little bit better now that I've added all that into the background there and bringing in again some more of my burnt umbers and my my light blue mixture to give the indication that we've got some snow. I'm adding here my a little bit of the rock uh, of the mountains kind of peeking through. And now at this point in time, I have added in uh, some of the low-hanging clouds. I used an airbrush to help me to achieve that because um, I, re I really like the softness that the airbrush provides. Now I'm going back through here and again adding another la layer of, of highlight on my snow. Nothing too intense, just a, a light blue mixture between the titanium white and the ultramarine blue. Adding a little bit more of my light blue here just to kind of draw out the contrast between the sun side of the cliff or peak and the shadowed side. And do a little touch up here in the back, just adding a little bit more of the dark here on my shadow in the snow. Adding a nice separation here with the fog. Um, bringing in some of those peaks a little better, bringing in some of the valley a little bit better with some another layer of color just to make it nice and smooth and transition well. A lot of this I know will be covered by my, my pine trees, but I uh, wanted to make sure I just got that in there. Adding another layer of light, bright color here with my orange and yellows and whites. Get, get that section really popping nice. Adding some more shadows, some more siennas, some more umbers. Now I'm bringing in another layer of some separation and highlight here throughout my dark side of the valley. A little more blues. And just have a, a lot of variety of colors between, uh, between the rocks and the snow. Now I'm coming back here and adding into those boulders um, a little more dark color. I wanted that to kind of jump out. Um, and I'll spend a little time adding some, some snow, some rock on top of those, kind of help those to, to stand out a little bit. Here's my first layer of some of the distant pine trees. I'm using a small fan brush to kind of bring those in. I'm, I, I only used a little white, a little um, sap green, and a, an ultramarine blue um, are my colors I'm using for those distant pine trees. And I'm using a small detail brush here, just a, a small round brush that I can help those to really kind of stand out. And then adding a little bit darker of the greens and blues here to achieve a, a little separation, show some of the um, tree formations that are kind of peeking through here. And, and a lot of that will also be, uh, fog will be added to that. Now I'm adding my really, really distant, tiny little pine trees uh, with the same color, um, sap green, ultramarine blue, a little white, 
Um, a little bit more on the sap green side. I want to keep those really kind of dark, but they're really distant and it's just a small upward stroke of the brush uh, just to kind of give an indication, a little separation and that you can know, hey, these are these are pine trees. They're, they're really far down into the, the canyon there on, on the valley floor. And then making sure I'm, I'm just following the angles. I need to know, I need to let the eye think that that, that these, ang these are angling upward. So we'll just get a few of those in there um, and nothing too si serious. Now I'm adding some, some of my blacks and grays here. This is going to be um, some of the stone that's gonna be peeking through underneath the layer of snow that I'm gonna be forming on top of that. So, um, a pretty simple stroke there, nothing really um, to, to put too much time or, or effort into. And now I'm starting my first layer of my snow. This is, uh, again, just a little bit of titanium white with ultramarine blue, um, keeping it, just keeping it a little bit um, light here and, and, and starting to show that um, I'm, I'm making sure that leave a lot of negative space. I want a lot of that underpainting to show through. And then I'm just working in lighter colors as I go. I'm slowly in lightening up that light blue mixture uh, with some titanium white and uh, just trying to form the snow following the angles. That way I can give the uh, impression that um, this, this is, again, another cliff or mountain formation that's that's most um, close to the front of the painting in the foreground. And then doing the same thing on the other side here. It's really important to make sure you don't kill that underpainting. So um, really watching the negative space and allowing a lot of the negative space to shine through and, and uh, making sure that I'm trying to follow the angles. There's going to be humps and lumps, and this is going over, this is going a little over a lot of, of, of rock underneath, maybe foliage uh, in the springtime. So um, just needing to slowly work this up and slowly adding the lighter colors. And as I go, I'll continue to add lighter colors here a little bit later. A little bit more intensity here, slowly building on this thing, going from light, from dark to light. And uh, as I go into the more of the pure color, it's it's mainly titanium white, a little bit of yellow mixed in with that. Now I'm following uh, my first la layer of the most forward uh, stand of, of pine trees here, and. Um, I'm starting with kind of some light yellow greens uh, because some of that's going to be um, hitting some sunlight's hitting pretty pretty strong in some of that section, and then a lot of this is just going to be my my shadow, and I'm just really using um, black, uh, purple, doxazine purple, a little blue mixture, just mainly black though, just to get a real dark color and then just trying to form uh, the basic shape of these of these large pine trees here. Now I'm just kind of filling in some of the the space here with some extra dark colors. I, I'm really kind of watching my brush strokes, making sure none of the canvas is showing through. And I'm using my detail brush here to really kind of draw out the individual branches that are peeking out on the sides of, of these pine trees and bringing in some of my, my darks.
it's just really important that I'm, I'm watching my shapes here and making sure I'm watching my negative space too because I don't want to kill too much of the mountain in the background or too much of the the valley that we've worked on here. And then following those angles leading down, they're, they're kind of growing more and more distant as they move away into the background. Now I started here with using a, my palette knife and I'm going to cover that up here in a second. I, I felt like that was a little too light. I was using um, some white and, and a little bit of my burnt sienna. So got a little bit too light and I, I, I'll go back here and I'll cover it with black again. I'll get those all covered back up and um, and then I'll go back through it once again with using more of my burnt sienna uh, and purple because I want to get those a little bit more shadowed as they, as they lead back into the, the dark recesses of those stands of trees. But still following, uh, getting those highlights kind of moved in there, making sure that my shapes are all kind of correct. And I'll continue to keep playing with that throughout the painting and working and just adding little little details here and there as I move more into the detail portion of this painting. I'm adding some of my highlights now. I'm using, really I'm using just kind of yellow white and then my, I've got a, uh, well, they, they call it yellow green, um, which is a, a color that you can purchase with the Golden Open brand. Um, and so I'm using a lot of the gold, the uh, yellow greens, adding a little extra yellow there and uh, starting to work on getting some of those highlights. And these are the, this is snow. So I'm going back with my light blues and just going really deep into the recesses back there and kind of give the indication or the illusion that, that, um, that helps to kind of seat those trunks um, to make them appear like they're a little bit more in the foreground here. This is where I come back through and change my trunks. I wasn't happy with how light those came out and I'll let those dry that dry for a little bit and go back and revisit that with with my burnt siennas and my and my doxazine purple mixture that I'll bring those colors back in. Now it's just kind of detailing. I'm starting to add um, a little bit more to those branches, making sure they kind of pop out the way I want them to and to just help them to look like the way I kind of would like to envision those and bringing in my highlights um, just real gently. This uh, this is more of, I'm kind of staying more into the green blue mixture here. Um, I don't want them to be really intense right now, just to uh, kind of show that they're starting to form the tree here. And then as I come back here on the right side, as I know that I'm getting a lot more sun glow here on these trees, this is more of my yellow green mixture um, that I, I'll intensify, add a little bit more of, of my yellow, a little bit of uh, white to opaque it, and really help to have those come out. And this is where I've kind of bringing those trunks back in with my doxazine purple and, and my burnt sienna, or I'm sorry, my burnt umber. So I just felt like uh, it was just, too bright earlier and wanted to kill that color so it wouldn't draw too much attention. Trying to creep, keep it kind of subtle, I'm using my script liner brush and kind of adding a little bit of some um, dead limbs sticking out and um, and kind of adding a little bit of interest, keeping the keeping uh, those pine trees kind of raw um, and kind of giving that impression that. Uh, that these are pine trees here, a couple dead twigs, a couple dead branches. And then just working my highlights here and making sure that that uh, I'm giving the illusion that there's still a lot of branches coming here. I'm, I'm adding another layer of highlight with a lighter version of my yellow green.
So it just takes patience, uh, slowly building this thing out, uh, thinking methodically about it, how I want it to appear and look, and I'm adding some extra snow. I'm causing the snow to kind of kind of creep up the side of the trunks as if um, some of it's kind of windblown a little bit and creating mounds. So now I'm starting into my jets and I've used my white charcoal brush to kind of add my my basic roadmap on that and I'm using a kind of a dark gray color mixture. I've, I've created this by using ultramarine blue and and white and um, some burnt sienna as as a nice dark gray mixture. It, it makes a nice rich gray and I like that. So just trying to follow the angles using my angle brush. I love this brush. If you can get these angle brushes, I've got a few different varieties of these of different shapes and sizes, but they're just, they're great. And I use them a ton. And, and uh, so if you can find these, they're, they're perfect for this type of work, trying to get around these, these delicate little angles that uh, are forming on these, on the plane with the wings and some, and the tail on the plane. So, so just kind of laying this in right now, adding a, a level of, this is just really pure black right here for uh, the way this is dipping in. I wanted to have this, this is going to be our most distant plane here. So uh, it'll have detail, not quite as much as the foreground plane, but um, this is an F, uh, F-15 fighter, pi uh, fighter plane. Um, so just working on getting the shadows underneath this thing built in here. So this is everything in shadow underneath the plane here on the fuel tanks. Um, some of the missiles that will form on there. And uh, then this will, of course, be the inside of the cockpit of the plane. So I'll continue to kind of add another la layer of color as I go. I, I want to watch those brush strokes, make sure that that uh, I'm getting good coverage and kind of covering up that canvas so it's not really bleeding through quite as much. So I don't need to be incredibly uh, specific or overly detailed at this point in time, really just kind of laying in the color. I need to be most careful though with my shape. Um, I don't want to uh, mess up the basic shape that I'm trying to create so that the eye can see this as a plane. Um, now I can get a little bit more specific as I start working um, more into this plane with more detail. I'm using smaller brushes. I'm using my liner brush here right now and I'm just giving the indication of some detail here inside the cockpit, working on some of the highlights some of the sun glow here on the missiles. Um, but again, not needing to get overly detailed um, to tell the story of what's happening here. Going back through some more color, I want to get some a nice solid color blocked into this and trying to avoid getting too many brush strokes. And now I can add my first layer here of highlight. I'm just trying to think about where the sun could be hitting um, this plane. And just going back, and you know, and I'm still using the same gray mixture, which is again my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna with some white. And as I lighten that up, I'm I'm just really just using the same mixture and just adding a little bit more white, and that causes it to be a little brighter as I go through with my highlights. And I've went kind of come in here now, and I've kind of 
use my my uh, charcoal pencil to help me to figure out uh, the shapes here on the on on the on some of the sections here on the plane. Um, getting my highlights all in here. So really just kind of slowly building in those highlights at this point in time. Getting the right level of, of light mixture, kind of detailing my, my missiles here. Now I'm working on the glass here and so I'm adding a little bit of, um, uh, of my white here and just kind of smudging it in to give the indication that that uh, that is the glass over the cockpit. And I'll just continue to keep kind of playing with this, slowly adding in my detail. I'll eventually uh, move into my script liner brush here and we'll start adding some of the metal plating uh, into the steel of the of the jet and I'll eventually add my flap wing my my wing flaps um, onto uh, the wings so this just this is just a process um, of trying to get this exactly right this is kind of the the light um, coloration I'm using here for almost like a brass color uh, that I created um, use my yellows and and some uh, purple uh, to kind of keep that dark and then I'm just adding in some more yellows here and some whites to help that to kind of pop out a little bit more working on those rocket boosters uh, they're at the very back. Uh, really, it's just black and, and some gray to help that kind of pop out a little bit. Not a whole lot of detail, but now I'm kind of adding, again, those, those small, finer details of, of what's happening here. So starting to, to get those wing flaps kind of worked in a little bit. I was using uh, photographs. I looked up photographs of, of F-15 fighter jets and found a couple that I, I kind of liked here. The other plane I'm going to be drawing in here soon is an F-16, so it's a little bit newer version um, of that series of, of jets, but uh, just found some military photographs that I liked and uh, just kind of playing off those images here to kind of create what I'm trying to accomplish here with this jet. So I'm at the point that now we're really just kind of bringing in the, the fine details and kind of refining uh, certain things here and, you know, kind of creating that illusion of what's happening. So that kind of, that kind of completes it. I'm just adding some air streams from the wings here with with my angle brush. And now we can start working on the F-16 fighter jet. And, and so kind of the same exact process, I was just going through uh, using the same gray mixture and then blocking in my underpainting for this. It's a little bit larger, it's a little bit closer, give the illusion that it's a, it's a little closer into the foreground from the last jet. And um, Again, being really careful here, um, it, I like to be loose and free when I paint, but when you get to doing these types of, of uh, subjects into your painting, um, getting all these different angles, it's pretty important to be pretty careful, which is why I like this angle brush. I can get so many really great positions um, with my hand and with that brush to get around and and I'll, and I'll move that canvas around so I can kind of get those angles where I want to get them. But but really just getting this thing kind of shaped the way I needed to have it shaped and, and be a little bit deliberate with those brush strokes. 
Now I'm adding another level of dark here. I, I've darkened up. I've kind of uh, gone to my gray mixture, added a little bit more of my purple and my siennas and even a little bit of charcoal black or midnight black to get that charcoal grayish color because that will become my shadow. And I'm kind of thinking about, okay, where's my shadow going to be? And and I'm trying to get that kind of established early on now, and then I can start working around that after the fact. So we'll get that tail wing in there, get the fuel tanks uh, put in right at this point here, and then just start kind of bringing in some of the shadows that are going to be underneath the fighter jet. Trying to establish, you know, make it three dimensional right now and really early on establish getting these shadows built in. And that'll serve me later as I start adding my detail. I can kind of start seeing where I'm going with, with this. And again, this is just another image that I found online um, with military planes. Uh, and, and that helped me to kind of figure out what these things look like. I'm not overly familiar with, with fighter jets. Um, I've always loved them um, as a kid and, and played with them with transformers and stuff. But, uh, you know, I've never painted these things. So uh, this has been a, a new adventure for me here as I try to figure this out. But this is kind of my first layer of highlight now. I'm thinking about where the sun is going to kind of hit some of these these sections of the plane and, and, and uh, knowing that my son's coming from the right, I'll start thinking about figuring out where these, these highlights start to live now. So I'm just bringing those in. I'm really using a, bright, a dry brush technique here to get these worked in. My underpainting by this point in time is, is dry, so now I can add this layer and I can kind of soften it with my brush here and, and, and still kind of retain some of the uh, dark underpainting with that, which is what I kind of wanted to achieve because I wanted to kind of give it that look that it's, it's steel um, plating on the side of, you know, this armor on the side of the jet here. Now I'm bringing in some more color and more highlights. I'm thinking about helping to create three-dimensionality with that, lightening those sections up there. And now it's just kind of working between lights and darks and highlights and shadows. And of course, this fighter jet it's, it's closer um, in the painting. It's got a lot more detail. So it took a whole lot more time for me to get this thing slowly layered and built out. But it was, it was a lot of fun um, doing this for the first time and trying to work from this photograph. And, um, and it, was, it, was, it just taught me a lot and I enjoyed the process. But uh, I'll probably end up doing more of these paintings in the future with these fighter jets. And um, I think my next one I'm going to do, I'm going to be doing some World War, World War I um, airplanes. And uh, that should uh, pose a, a new and interesting challenge as well. So starting to work on a little bit more detail with my finer little round brush here. And uh, I don't even know what all these parts and pieces are. I don't know what you call a lot of them, but there's quite a few of them being carried um, underneath the plane and on the sides of the underneath portion of the wings. Um, I know that's kind of the air intake there at the very front. So now it's just kind of slowly building this out and figuring things out and getting the right shapes, the right um, the right colors playing back and forth with each other and adding all these 
little fine details that I'm seeing now in, in the photograph. Kind of adding some of my, my tail flaps and some of the separation in the armor. It's kind of getting to that point now here. And this is where it kind of started getting fun because I could really see it starting to come through now and a lot of that time doing the underpainting. Underpainting is, it never looks like anything until it finally does look like something. You just got to keep at it and stay patient and, and let it kind of go through the natural process of slowly layering it and building it from start to finish. Kind of working on these these rockets or these missiles here right now they've also got little tail flaps and and so adding a, the head on the missile there and some of the other colors bringing all that out just a, a lot of small details here and i really had to just be patient get my nose to the canvas um, and really kind of work work this out with my smaller brushes kind of intensifying my shadows here now, um, making sure that uh, I'm getting the right values. I'm kind of working on this rocket booster thing here now at the back of the plane and using some of my lighter gray I used a lot of that gray, that that blue and, and umber mixture that created that gray with some of the white. And I just used it in very varying degrees and changed the value with, with my titanium white. Um, so if you attempt to do this painting, you'll want to make a pretty good pile of that gray mixture. Adding some of my sun glow here. Um, Kind of the silver lining on some of that and that helped it to kind of separate from the mountain in the background and now i'm writing in you know i they they have certain uh stenciled in numbers on the back of the of the plane on the tail wing here and uh so just trying to use my script liner brush and and, and kind of draw that in that's that's eight nine zero um, AF for Air Force. So continue to add my my details into those wings, and then really just following the the, the pattern and the shapes right here. Uh, to make sure I'm getting the right shapes. I'm using a, just a light gray right there to, to use on my with my script liner brush to make those real detailed lines. And then just the all the plates on the armor that I'm seeing in the photograph and just kind of playing off that and figuring out some things where all this lives. That's like a, an air intake or something right there that I was trying to get drawn in and so yeah just a lot of detail work I saved the cockpit for the very end because there's a little man in there and I wanted to make sure I could spend the appropriate amount of time trying to get that that basic detail it's not even very detailed but just the illusion of detail that goes into it I had to had to take a little time and, and kind of figure that out so This is where I'm drawing in the Air Force, the little star and and um, stripes here on the wing and on the side of the plane here. So had a couple other things stenciled into the armor on this. So I was just trying to get that kind of figured out. Kind of used a light gray on that, get some highlights in. 
course, my head's in the way a lot, so. But uh, just kind of painting in the star here. I like a lot of detail and I like putting a lot of detail in my paintings. Um, so to grab all the detail that I'm seeing in the, in the jet, it's just right down my alley. It's, it's things I like. I enjoy taking the time and bringing in those little special touches of detail that I think just really make a painting interesting, put some time into it. Now I'm kind of scumbling in with dry brush, uh, just some highlights uh, going into my light gray and and kind of just dancing in with that dry brush technique and getting that in there. Certain sections, kind of lightening it up. Kind of adds a little bit of interest. Gives it more of that uh, metal, metallic look to it. Starting to work on the on the missiles on the on the opposite side of the uh, plane here. I'm adding just a pure white here on, on a lot of these sections of the plane where I feel like it's getting the most sun glow hitting it. So just a pure white. I even go back with some of my um, some of my white gesso and use that in, in place of the acrylic white. It's thicker, has better pigment, um, and I can put it on thick and uh, and it doesn't seem to dull as it dries. And as we all know, acrylic uh, paint usually dries a couple shades darker. Um, and the way to prevent that is just by keeping your paint real thick if you really want to have that. Now I'm kind of working here, finally into the cockpit, trying to form the seat, form the man, form his arm, and just some other little things I'm kind of seeing. So I'm just kind of just kind of ad-libbing here a little bit. And as I see certain shapes, just kind of kind of throw them in there. And I'm just using a real light, uh, kind of a mixture between my white, my sienna, and my umber, a little purple, kind of keeping it a little bit dull and dark. But I can add highlights later. So there I'm doing the face mask. I'm doing the helmet of my little man that's piloting this thing. And what I'll do is once this dries, I'll go over the glass with a real light, um, kind of a bluish turquoise to give it that kind of glassy look about it. So we'll get that here. Uh, more or less, it's, it's really just a glaze, uh, kind of a turquoise glaze that I put over the glass. So I'm adding my Airstreams right here. That's a little that's a little light right there in the front. So getting some of the details out of the way here, working back more on those thrusters in the back. And that's again my yellow and purple um, to create that brassy color and then coming back with some yellows and whites to highlight it a little bit. Adding more sun glow, certain sections here. I'm kind of hitting my refining mode now. I step back and just look at little parts and pieces. And what can I do to improve it? And just kind of, kind of trying to look around and and give it those final finishing touches.
This is my this is my turquoise glaze. Uh, I thinned it down quite a bit, and then just adding my little my little glass line um, highlights, reflected reflected lighting on the glass there. Well, this has been a fun project. I appreciate you tuning in. I hope that was helpful. Um, it's the first time I've ever painted jets before, so that was kind of fun and, and a nice challenge. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Mark Harvel Art, and I appreciate you tuning in. We'll uh, look forward to doing another, another painting here real soon. Thanks. Bye.